Dogs of War Cry is a podcast from the Mortal Realms focusing on War Cry, a fast-paced cinematic skirmish game by Games Workshop. You can expect discussions on gameplay, rules, homebrew, lore, painting, terrain, narrative gaming, leagues, and events. All right, guys, welcome. All right, we're finally getting our next episode in here. It has been since Ooh. May, since our last episode, I think. So we kind of covered uh, Adepticon, the event, and how that went. So today, obviously, episode seven, we're going to be talking about Briar and Bone, the new Warcry release. And as you can all see, I have Paven and Vint here with me tonight to rock the show. How are you guys? I'm doing amazing, Josh. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> right. Yeah, Thanks doing good. Here. Doing good. It's been, uh, it's, been, it's been a minute. I'm sure we've all got lots of things going on, which has been exciting. Um, but Josh, how about you? What do you, what do you got? Well, tell us some stories, man. Oh, well, in terms of like hobby progress, uh, not a ton really, uh, actually a lot of home project <laughs> hobby progress, uh, and renovating the upstairs, redoing trim and doors and closet doors. And it's a whole different kind of hobby, but, uh, yeah, not nearly as fun. <laughs> how about you, Vin? Uh, so I, uh, let's see, since May, um, I went to a 40 K tournament. That was a lot of fun. Um, I did, I didn't do very well, but I had a blast. Uh, <laughs> important part. Um, yeah, I did. I've, I've built and painted an entire chaos Knights army for 40 K. So that was exciting. And then, uh, you know, the new edition of, uh, age Sigmar came out. So, um been doing uh some of that but like hobbying a lot of stormcast stuff together um i like fourth i'm excited to see some of these things make their way into war cry because i think yeah, definitely. it'll be real neat to see some of the some of the characters and some of the other stuff in like a smaller skirmish setting that isn't spearhead spearhead is very awesome but i just uh i want to see it i want to see it in our game <laughs> <laughs> right how about you paven uh, I've also uh, been getting sucked in a little bit into Age of Sigmar Fourth Edition. Uh, Vint, can you give me like one? Tell me one thing you want from Fourth that you want to work right. Um, you know the um, now I'm bad with names. Um, I do want to see the Skaven hero uh, on his his claw giant big rat. I just gotcha. want to see that on because okay. I think it'd be a fun cavalry piece. Um, I mean, you already have a lot of really cool Skaven models in Warcry, um, but having him in there to lead like a group of um, Storm Vermin or like have him ally with some of the new Rat Ogres. I mean, they already have their their scroll, but like, I think it'd be fun. Mm -hmm. The Jazale would be interesting. I do, and this is, I haven't looked to see our Jazales even in there. I don't have any because I don't have any resin ones. But um, they were at one point in time. I'm pretty sure. So I'm sure they're still there. Yeah. yeah. How about you, Paven? Uh, what am I working on, or what do I want from fourth into both? Into both. Yeah. Both? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll start with. Uh, well, I just want them to do a a Warcry tie-in campaign to the Skaven type box, like they did for Dominion, of which yes. uh, me and Josh played through and uh, recorded a few episodes about. Uh, it would yeah. be fun to do that again. Mm -hmm. uh, especially because now in my hobby, spending all my time painted up these uh, Skaven Tide Stormcast. Uh, it took me three years to paint Dominion. I'm hoping to break that record, uh, <laughs> at least by shove off, a, uh, shave off a few weeks off there. Uh, but, uh, things have been going pretty, pretty good. I mean, I've been, it feels like I've been painting it all summer now, but I finished the terrain. I finished one night quest store, and then I have another 14 models in progress uh that nice. i but i haven't got any like i a unit of liberators is probably closest to the finish line but i have like prosecutors on my table i have the lord uh oh, i'm gonna mess up all the names but the lord vigilant uh which i think is on griff charger or griff crow these oh, oh, names are just nothing. They just make they're just they have, uh, <laughs> no relation to anything. Uh, but it's the uh, it's the big stormcast hero with the flaming axe on the uh, yeah. the, the new griff hound. More more griff. 
Is that the is that that more one? Grift, more grift, yeah. less grift. Who yeah, knows? Well, I, there's it's like the grift that's death focus. It's it's from more. Yeah, right? it's, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah I can't yeah, the that. um, yeah, there's slightly. Yeah, I love I love the new ruination chamber stuff. I think it's really cool. I can't wait to see more of it uh, this weekend coming up. Uh, right. So, right. Or yeah, we're recording early August. Uh, August 10th is the next release show. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that's what I'm working on. I'm hoping to. I'm hoping to finish the spearhead, which I've been playing a lot of. Wow, that gets into games played. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's it for hobby. <laughs> Working hard. That's awesome. You, know, you guys both been pretty busy. That's great. Well, talking about uh, progress, why don't you lead us into Path of Glory there, Paven? Oh, sure. Yeah. What are you guys going to play? You guys been playing any Warhammer? Ben? Yeah. Anything besides 40K? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, Kill Team. Been doing a lot of Kill Team. So, not really. <laughs> still the wrong game. Uh, yep, still, still the wrong, wrong game. setting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> The kill team group that I play with does, uh, it's usually once a month we do War Cry. And so for the last one of those, I brought some old cast models and went around and just smashed stuff with some retributors. So, um, and that was, that was just kind of fun and funny. Uh, and then the one, because there was another one in there, I played some of my, my Cypher Lords list, um, but just mono Cypher Lords. And that was kind of fun. I haven't put them on the table in a while, and it was just neat to see them go off. And uh, they went off in a big way, um, and that was cool. Uh, I kicked three people into lava because, of course, <laughs> catacombs. Um, and then uh, the second game was on a non. It was on the um, Red Harvest board, so there was uh, the little lavas there, um, mm. and nobody got ground up in the machine, which is a big sad, but. Um, we did push people into lava and make them take damage and flip right. the switch a bunch uh, yeah. with the storm cast. Um, yeah, it was good. I only lost one fighter to the lava. Uh, we didn't do the after rolls because we're not doing those this time, but it's sure. been fun. Uh, awesome. It's a it's a new group of people, so there are a lot of like young hobbyists that are just kind of learning, and that's been cool to do. Uh, mentor them and. Get them uh, addicted. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. No, they're they're deep into the plastic, but they aren't into. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I think since uh, since Adepticon, I've been playing the Vulcan Flame Seekers. We did a it was a short league, kind of after Adepticon that I played in, and then we had a, a summer league that was a lot more flexible because people they got a lot of vacations and stuff. And, uh, but really enjoying them. Just got them right out of the box. Um, no heroes no other sorts of additions but uh um you know the scenario i've been playing them well to the scenarios and haven't lost the game with them i tied one game but i've won every wow. other game i played with them so but usually sometimes it was very 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 close <laughs> due to luck you know whatever that happens but but yeah they've been they've been a lot of fun they're kind of well balanced a lot of good abilities enjoyed playing them so yeah those are those are my favorite fire slayer models yeah. by a long you know, yeah. by quite the margin. Yeah, it's they're, they're so good. They finally fixed Fire Slayers with that one box. Uh, hopefully, it's um, it's a sign of things to come. But <laughs> right. also, I, yeah, I just looked over. I have, an, I have like a, a complete in package box of um, Flame Seekers that I owe Aaron. Well, actually, oh. well, Aaron owes me for buying them. Uh, but <laughs> I'm not going to get to them. I got to go collect. <laughs> Um, for me, I guess if we're counting since May, I've played some okay. War Cry since then. Yeah, I've played, mm -hmm. I've been playing, I played a lot of, I played my Black Talons at Adepticon, uh, and I've kept playing them in League, and those are, it's a really fun war band. You know, it's not many mm -hmm. fighters, you're not taking a lot of objectives, but they can, they can, they can slap around pretty good, which is fun. Uh, and then I also played, uh, my Wild Decor, which I also really like to play. Um, like, uh, you know, I yeah. try to yeah. get as many dogs on an opponent as possible and get that, uh. <laughs> Yeah. That. I forget what it's called, but it's like the dog get sick of is the move, and now uh, you yeah, yeah. the average base number of dogs. Kill. Although, still really <laughs> disappointed. You don't count the dog that's on the base of the leader. I don't. Things like I, oh, I gotta count that dog. I know. Just I know. let him. Let him. Let him. It's let hard him. enough to do anyway, right? Yeah. yeah. Like... It's like yeah, it's so hard. It's so hard to do. Yeah, and just give me another three damage for like <laughs> spending my whole turn trying to yeah. set them up. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm playing. Otherwise, I've been playing some Spearhead, which uh, is is it like Warcry? It's kind of like Warcry. Is that it's a, it's 
it's it's Age of Sigmar. It's the Age of Sigmar game type. Like you're playing mm-hmm. with units. You know, you got you're rolling a bunch of dice to attack, and you're rolling to hit and wound all this kind of stuff. Um, but they did. I think they've learned a lot in game design. Uh, game Workshop has, and it's a really it's like the way I play Age of Sigmar now because I don't have like four hours, right. uh, and I can get a game in in less than an hour. So that's nice. I can get two nice. spearheads in a weekly game night, which is really which is really fun. I heard you've been playing a lot of Underworlds too. Uh, almost only online. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, gotcha. I mean, I played an online league. Uh, this, yeah. This uh, this go around to give it a shot. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I played some Underworlds in the spring. Uh, yeah, I, I, I've been bouncing around all Games Workshop games. But I've been oh, yeah, that's fun too. Keep it. Yeah, they're all good. it's great. We have a great community. We have like, if you want to play any Age of Sigmar game in Madison, we have like a good group of, of chill guys wanting yeah. to play it. Right, right. Yeah, uh, any Warhammer games in general. Uh, yeah. Good 40K, Age of Sigmar, small scale, large scale. Yeah, no, we're yeah. very lucky that way. When all my kids... a... Go ahead. It's super cool to see like uh, the community. Like, There's a new store in Stoughton that I've been going to uh, that's super neat. And it's just so neat to like go to these places and like having worked in the community and then like having been in the community for as long right, as all of us have to go to a store and meet new people, right? It's not like, like, I know it seems, that seems like a strange thing to say, but like, right, I'm not going to go see my buddy John every single place I go on Warhammer night because he's the only person I can play, right? I'm going to go see five or six new faces or I'm going to go to a new store and look, they have their whole community and they have only been open for two months. Like, it's so cool to see and like to see how each of the communities differs as they grow. Um, it's just really mm-hmm. nice and like makes it feel really healthy in the, the Madison area. Yeah, so. there's, there's always nerds crawling out of the woodwork here. In Madison. <laughs> you know, you got to do something in the winter. Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Wisconsin in general. Yeah. But that reminds me, uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of old guard games in Milwaukee. But yeah, it's pretty close to it's like a block from Ben's house, my stepson. Um, and it some some guy decided he wanted to open up a game store. It is phenomenal. It is packed full of you know both historicals and other miniature games. You know he's got suits of armor, really lots of art, and apparently there's a huge gaming area downstairs. Really cool. So if you're in Milwaukee near the UW Milwaukee campus, definitely drop in and check it out. It's pretty cool looking. Yeah, uh, one of our our buddy Joe, who we talk about once in a while on the show, um, <laughs> he uh, he went down there on a little bit of a pilgrimage, and he said like all the all the nicest things you can say about a shop. It's supposed to be big. They've got lockers for rent, which yeah. when like when I'm thinking like right now, I do a lot of my gaming downtown uh, in Madison, so it's like it's not hard to park and move your army, but like I can see why you wouldn't want to like handle all that downtown. Right. Like you've got your big case that looks like, you know, it, I don't know what kind of weird gun it would be, but you know, it's, it's a sketchy looking case and you're walking down with all your models and like <laughs> there's people running around and drunk, drunk stuff. Like you just want to be careful with them. Um, and it, it's right. You can't do that and bring terrain and bring other stuff. Um, yeah. So like, I think it's cool that he has uh, lockers for rent there. So you can yeah. like go rent a locker and just leave all your, books and models and paints and stuff there and then just show up right so you don't have to travel back and forth with it which i thought was pretty mm-hmm. cool yeah, that's interesting yeah i didn't you know i didn't know the how many lockers they had i'd heard they had some but quite a few cool. it's like half of a wall or a wall oh full. wow yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome mm-hmm. excellent all right Trent, you want to kick us off in the next section sir all right um so i'm so we did couldn't get the thing up in time. Oh, so, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, visions of madness. Vis- Ooh. All right. So next on Visions of Madness, because this will definitely come out and edit. Um <laughs> <laughs> not <laughs> editing video, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Um One day. <laughs> we've, we've been had. Uh all right. Um so was there I'm two white dwarfs behind, but yeah, I we have three there's... white dwarfs. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, yeah. um, uh, well, go ahead. So, oh no, no, I was gonna say so we can kick that off right away if you want. Josh. <laughs> sure. So back in May, we had uh, the 
celebratory 500th issue of White Dwarf, and uh, they released Gromadal, White Dwarf rules for a huge variety of games, including Warcry. So it was really cool. He's like 210 points, got some pretty good stats for both ranged melee and some interesting abilities, one that kind of helps people around him. The quad is interesting, where you're kind of uh, boosting other models, or you're, or you're not boosting other models, but you're preventing enemy models from using reactions or abilities within six inches of him. But uh, and then the first one um, allows him to crit on three ups with its ranged attack. So it's pretty cool, and of course, you can you know use them in any order faction. But uh, but yeah, they came out with lots of different games profiles for him, so it's kind of cool. Yeah, um, I, I liked that. Like the 500 edition of White Dwarf was pretty cool. It came with a bunch of neat Bindle stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I also liked that, like, right? It came out with rules for him there, but it like even brought up, and we've talked about it before on the show, where you could take another character through his his progression right if you wanted yeah. to and use him as like use go trek or use right. you know neve black talent if you wanted to right and and really get it going i did find the thing we're back up and running sorry guys no, no um, problem. <laughs> uh the uh 501 we had the rules for the pyron flood mm -hmm. um which gave you all the stuff for the two war bands there with your uh adrillian river blades and your pyre guys so you could kind of go through your your quest lines there, which was cool. Um, mm -hmm. Still have mine on sprue, so I haven't caught up and built those yet. But I'm yeah, excited yeah, to put likewise. the pirate guys together on, on the table. I, I still have your pirate guys in a box here waiting for you. Oh, well, I, I got a set too, so now I have two. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they're sitting with your Raptrix and your Furies. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, and I just got 502 recently, and it had some a, a cool campaign arc in it. I haven't read it in depth, but I, you know, I kind of indicated some some unique things in there. It has a it's kind of like a path to glory almost for a model in your warband. Doesn't have to be your leader; it can be any model you want. But um, but in, and it said two plus players, so there are like eight different paths or origins that you can start from. And um, and so the, you know they say of course if you're playing with more than two people each person should try to take a different origin because it makes it more interesting, and then the origin you take determines what uh, challenging scenarios you have to do to reach your end your your mythic quest and your mythic traits. So it sounded really cool. And again, I haven't read through it completely, and uh, I plan to kind of get it scanned and and uh, share it with the the league group to see if anybody would be interested in trying it out for one of the leagues, but. I mean, it, it sounds fun just from what you've described. I haven't checked out 502, um, but that that sounds like it'd be right up my alley. So that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's almost kind of like some of the stuff that you you played around with before Cry in the past, but uh, mm -hmm. maybe not quite the same. But but yeah, they're interesting to see. Oh yeah, we got this warband mate, and you know, we'll see what happens in his path. The uh, you know, uh, yeah heroism so to speak <laughs> especially if you don't choose the leader if we kind of be like oh wait a minute what's this upstart doing <laughs> it could be good narrative <laughs> but <laughs> all right well with that circle of paint paven yeah how your treasure tokens going everyone <laughs> uh, mine are built yeah I know. I, I had think one you break had a, on the me. most progress. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, you had you one got... break. Yeah. Yeah. I had one break. Um, my hobby desk is a little messy right now. Uh, <laughs> I've I've been having some difficulty deciding what's a hobby, and I've had some time to do so, which is awesome. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, I I've defaulted to rolling dice, and whatever the dice say is what I end up hobbying, and uh, mm -hmm. this is how we ended up. You know, I've been doing. Stormcast. I uh, right now on the hobby desk. I have Chaos Space Marines. Um, right. I I've been doing like I pulled out some of the the Warcry bands that I know are going away, and I'm like, all right, these have to get built now because otherwise they're gone forever. Right. Um, so it's uh, <laughs> in some of the moving. One of them was a little spindly, and it definitely broke into a bunch of pieces. So I'm down one, but yeah. I have the rest of them. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I've done a lot of brainstorming again, you know, kind of refreshing my memory and the notes I had. But yeah, I need to go down to the 
to the basement into the bits box and start grabbing all the stuff I was thinking about trying out. So I kind of I'm trying to decide on if I was going to go with the theme, and I started thinking of a couple of things for themes, and I couldn't think of enough to get all six. So kind of waffling back and forth. It'll probably be a mixture of themes. How about you, Paven? Any progress? I don't know. I forgot. I totally forgot about it. It's <laughs> uh, fine. You're you're a late addition to it, so yeah. Totally uh, yeah maybe I'll you know I won't yeah you know, I'll hit by <laughs> get hit by a bus. I'll be bailed out. Um, yeah, don't I want hit by a bus. No, that's yeah. Not no, no, I don't want to. Do that. Um, uh, yeah, I want to do something like with the new edition of Age of Sigmar, like do something uh, uh you know Skaven Tide, the Gnaw kind of themed. Yeah, uh, I'm hoping more terrain comes out or like sometimes they do a set of special set of objective tokens right um with a new edition i think they did that for aos 2 mm -hmm. i don't think they did it for ages they didn't do it for three you know yeah. we had some you don't play. do that anymore but oh that'd be cool that'd yeah. bail me out uh but no, <laughs> nothing, nothing to nothing to report yeah that's cool that's cool all right we still have a time yeah sounds so far vince is winning <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. This happened last time and I lost by a lot, so it's okay. <laughs> Don't you All worry. Right. Mosquito. Oh, I'm getting in the office. <laughs> Giant birds in the Norwood. <laughs> Some blood suckers. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, we'll have to bug Eric too to see where he's at with that. I'm sure he hasn't made a whole lot of progress just yet, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe that's what he's doing. He's just working <laughs> on his objective token. It doesn't sound like treasure token. Yeah, so yeah. Right, right. <laughs> okay, well, with that, let's hit our victory condition. Let's talk about this new Briar and Bone edition, the new models, and all the juicy lore and tidbits we got in here. Um, did you want to kick us off, Paven? Uh, with like my impressions or what yeah. I like, what I yeah. think about them. Exactly. Yeah, two new warbands, two new uh, cool sets of miniatures. Uh, all let's, I think we should start with the Twist Weld, which is um, the Warcry take on the Sylvaneth. Mm -hmm. uh, and they are Sylvaneth, but a little bit infected by a <laughs> fungus spore parasite. Yeah. Uh, so they, if you look, they're kind of they're the first new dryad models we have gotten in I don't know 15 years, 20 years. Yeah. Uh, so that's cool. But um, uh, they they are uh, all like kind of rank and file Sylvaneth, so spite revenants, tree revenants, uh, dryads. Um, but they've all been infected by a, like kind of a creeping vine or like fungus uh, from the from the gnarwood, uh, mm -hmm. and they're led by um, uh, a Oh, I forget what the name of the leader is, but it's a wizard that uses bees. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, it's not the uh, not the warden. No, the yeah, name. no. Let me look it up here. It'll come up. But yeah, that, that's them. I thought they were cool. Uh, you that's know, I think a, a lot Swarm of them... Sage. Swarm, Swarm Sage. Sage. Swarm Sage. Yep. Yeah. Yep. The thing is, I like my Sylvaneth to be beautiful. <laughs> are not as beautiful because they have the <laughs> parasite on them. So that's that was my that was my initial reaction. Yeah. So what, what about you all on the twist well? The terrain. I just want an angry tree that eats people. I mean <laughs> Right. I know. Yeah, the, rule, the, the rules for it are pretty funny too, actually. <laughs> I'll have to cover that later. But yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah. I was like, you know what we could use use more of? We need more <laughs> Narla. <laughs> yeah. Really. This one has an open mouth, though. It's like, ah. Yeah. yeah. Give me a big. Yeah, we don't have one that's a stump yet. <laughs> that's right. That's probably too easy to make. <laughs> give me a stumpy one. Okay, and then the other the other warband we got was the uh, uh, Teratic Teratic yeah. Cohort. Yeah. Cohort. Cohort. Yeah. Teratic. Cohort. Teratic. Yeah. yeah. Teratic, Teratic sounds way better. Uh, <laughs> that out. Teratic uh, cohort, and they are OCR Bone Reapers, but they're all kind of animal style. So we yeah. got uh, a bird one, we got a dog one, we have two soldier looking ones that have like animal legs. Yeah, and, then we, have a, right, yeah. and then we have the centaur one as the leader. Yeah. Um, all very unique looking for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I think it really expands the OCR kind of design uh, mm -hmm. uh, spread, and I think they're dope. 
really like the dog ones the best. I think those are the coolest. Uh, I feel like yeah, what, initial seems... reactions. What were your, your all's initial reactions to these models? So when it comes to the the OBR, aside from that, I'm in love with the tree. Um, the OBR fit Gur really well, um, but I also feel like we've we've been accidentally stumbling through a book of what factions get a dog next uh, by <laughs> by GW. Yeah. You know, yes. like yes. like I am, true. <laughs> I'm so excited for what random dog creature they come up with next. Right, we have baboons. <laughs> We're like. Yes. <laughs> Stormcast and Hippopotami next year, 2025. <laughs> Put it on my bingo card. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> they just need like griff, griff hounds again. I mean, we can have a griff hound, but you don't have yeah. all the different variations, which would be kind of fun to have again. Yeah. And so, yeah, sometimes your dog is a monkey, which is a great, <laughs> right? Dog, right? right. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. The gorilla thing, and then you know the egg snatchers, and the, yeah, a lot of unique pets yeah, in the mm -hmm. warbands lately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes I feel like the Gur theme in Age of Sigmar 3, so the third edition of Age of Sigmar, was best expressed in Warcry. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. 100%. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think Except for maybe, just... uh, I don't know, the box, with the elves versus ghost box. I don't know if that had a lot of Gur in it. No, yeah, you're right. There, there was less bestial influence in that box set. Everything else has had a lot more influence in it. Yeah, for Agreed. sure. There was more Thanks primal to... fire and water rather yeah. than bestial. Yeah, yeah, but that's okay. That's all right. Um, we'll let it slide. All right, let's let's <laughs> let's let's jump in. You know, they'll get more of our hot takes on these war bands uh, yeah, throughout this episode. Yeah. Let's jump into like the narrative changes, or. Wow. <laughs> inch and claw our way <laughs> closer <laughs> ever closer but never quite there to Talaxis. it's interesting this time lots of direct statements actually ruins can be seen you know uh, i put some statements towards yeah. the end so we could talk about you know where this might be going but uh yeah, the, 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 yeah they've yeah. added a couple of sections of the map obviously the two faction areas the the twist root mm -hmm. thicket um, where the twist weld is a deadly spores, life sucking moss, and strangling briar roots. Sounds pleasant. <laughs> then the bone mire, the teratic cohort, <laughs> is the swampy area where they've been harvesting all the bones out of the ground and out of the trees' digestive sacs. So apparently that's also where they kind of keep pet rav ravening gnarled oaks to feed people and collect the bones. So I was like, that's, that's awesome. But it's kind of a mess, it sounds like. Do you guys but in feel like to that? Oh, go ahead. Do you feel like they steal some of these ideas when they go to Adepticon from a certain <laughs> Dogs of War Cry narrative? <laughs> <laughs> we had pyre guys that are burning down the forest. Now we've got people strangling out gnarl oaks to to get their bones. Like it seems really familiar, guys. I don't know. Once or twice is coincidence, <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> I can almost guarantee they're not doing that. Right, I mean, right. Oh. Production cycles being what they are. <laughs> <laughs> We're just prophetic. <laughs> yeah, honestly. <laughs> Great minds think alike. Irish right. GW yeah, there you go. Stuff. I like it. That's uh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, the two other regions they kind of added in, in, in the lore are called the Ravening Ruin, where it's just essentially saying... The ruins themselves can now be seen, but they're surrounded by all this deadly parasitic plants and spores and some interesting gnarled teeth flowers with acidic gases. So it's saying that you can see them, but now you can't you still can't reach them. <laughs> so, <laughs> we got two more boxes to go before we can get to Talaxis. Maybe, maybe four I don't more know. pieces of gnarled oak terrain. <laughs> Three new critters that'll be your pets in whatever yeah, faction or, yeah, you are. Yeah, a couple of new dogs. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, can see, we can see it, but next time we're going to be able to smell it. Right. <laughs> it sounds like we can already smell it. The yeah, acidic well, gases. Yeah, smell it. Yeah. It doesn't smell pleasant. Oh, yeah. I can almost <laughs> taste it. And it says the ravening reach. Trees have fed the most here because all the bodies that we continue to throw at Talaxis. Apparently, the thicket is so tangled that you've got to mm -hmm. cut your way or crawl your way through. Or, I like this part. It sounded really interesting. Travel among the treetops. I was like, 
Well, shoot, now we can play Warcry on the tops of the trees. This will be great. <laughs> so we'll see what kind of terrain that might come up with. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> but yeah, but no, they had lots of lots of interesting tidbits about the final battle for Talaxis is set to commence in similar types of statements. So I was like, hmm. hmm. Yeah, we'll, we won't we'll, need we'll, we'll, we'll delve we'll in more in. later. Two years trying to black this. <laughs> yeah. But uh but yeah, I don't know. Uh, did either of you want to kind of go into the the final prize, the lore behind uh, this, these two factions and, and what they're doing here, this particular place? Sure, I'll jump in. Uh the so what are the warbands doing in this box and like why, why are they here so the uh the ocr uh, warband is um they're doing kind of what everybody else is doing they're trying to get into axis get the goods and get out um so that's kind of aligned with everybody else and they're pretty far in because well i guess it's because they're undead and they can just kind of go harder and faster and they're well built for gur because they're all like animal bones um and on top of that there is so many dead dead people in the gnarl uh, the gnarlwood at this point because we've been playing warcraft for here two years um that they have tons of bones to to use to create more creatures um uh, mm -hmm. or replenish their losses so and one of the ways they do this as josh said is they just like kind of pull them all out of a out of a gnarl oak that is like currently digesting them and that kind of uses it like cleans off the bones gets all right. the meat off of it and it's ready to be the good part the bone part is ready to be used um so that's what they're doing and they're almost there they would be they would be all the way in if it wasn't for the sylvaneth here the twist weld who are kind of standing as like close to the last line of defense uh as they don't the the origin of the curse is talaxis and talaxis the all the haywire um realm shaper engines that are that are like malfunctioning within the ruin of the of uh, the old the old um I have Chotex uh, spaceship temple uh, is kind of also spitting out other mutagenic life properties. And that's what infected the twist weld. And it is, um, it is now an affliction that effect that can affect all of this Sylvaneth and is kind mm -hmm. of a, it can be almost not an existential threat, but really bad because it like, it's fatal. It's a fatal infection. They don't know how to get rid of it. Um, and so they want to prevent it from spreading any further. And so they're defending the ruin so other people don't get those magical dangerous artifacts and pull it out or, you know, get infected by some strange uh, malady and spread it into the greater realms. And so they're defending the ruin and they're what they're trying to do is trying to destroy it or collapse it deep underground so nobody can get to it by causing like gnarl, gnarl oaks to kind of like grow and writhe and become so i don't know big and corrupted that mm. it, they all collapse in on the rune and suck it underground so that's what they're trying to do and so that's yeah. why they're battling uh outside of at, at the gates to try to prevent the ocrx from going in the ocrx also don't want the the uh, twist well to, to destroy the their prize yeah yeah very interesting i thought it was interesting too that the the, apparently the OC arcs are in the shapes they are because they failed at something and the gosh has punished them in, in animal form, either like the harpies, you know, they, they apparently let someone get away. So they sh changed them into harpies that can fly fast so they mm -hmm. can catch their prey from now on as a form of punishment. <laughs> but yeah, so they're there trying to regain the gosh's favor because he's pissed off that there's all this life giving stuff there and he's like no no there can't be any of that i want it all dead so this they sent them in to go get rid of this get rid of the artifacts that create life or growth and and then you know maybe we'll see but you know they also allude in the book that that these sort of cohorts are so effective that they rarely ever get to be reformed into their normal selves because they're just too useful <laughs> Like that's a yeah. bummer. <laughs> I also I also really like there's no way to get promoted in the uh, OCR legions uh, because when you're created you're already perfect yeah. so you're right where you're supposed to be but it's all but you can definitely get demoted so it's like uh, like you know show how terrible you are and you'll definitely get knocked out. So I know. Are so 
you know, screwed up one way or the other. And even if it's not their fault at all, like, mm-hmm. you know, the, the enemy, like, was destroyed by another group, uh, you're still punished because yeah. Nagash demands perfection. Right. Uh, and so, you know, they get turned into, like, bone dogs. <laughs> I thought it was funny. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, this, he, he, like, mentions that Nagash is so controlling of the OCR bone reapers because mm-hmm. the vampires are... <laughs> Always fight each other. He has no real control over them. So this is this is these are the right these are the guys. We're gonna make this fresh work for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and the twist world was interesting too because it talked about how they got infected and then they traveled the realm routes to try and find help, and then it started spreading uh, to different mm-hmm. realms and has infected other um, smaller groups, and they had to burn realm routes and shut them off and. Mm-hmm. exile them so they wouldn't continue to spread though they did talk about some splinter individuals or factions that are still trying to find Alariel to get healed and they're really worried about them getting to the heart of guy ran and mm-hmm. infecting all this <laughs> yeah like, hey that's some yeah it's pretty nasty stuff there all right so in terms of the uh yeah so the box is is, is paving outlined it's it's really you know, contest between the two factions really close to uh, the Talaxis. And, and, you know, in terms of, you know, even in the campaign arc alludes to them getting close enough to get in, but you kind of read the descriptions of what happens in the campaign arc and they don't actually get in yet. So, <laughs> like Paven said, we still got some ways to go. But, uh, but yeah, the, they did have some interesting outlines of when the, when the Sylvaneth were first infected, when the OCR first arrived and, he even talked about how the OCR Bone Reapers got got further in because of the you know their bestial nature, but also because they had no flesh. The Narolokes kind of left them alone. It was like, eh, there's nothing to eat. <laughs> they just go on through. It's like, oh, that makes it easier. There's no predators hunting you. You're you're undead. Don't have to rest. Yeah, that's pretty effective. Um, so uh, Vin, you want to talk to uh, you know what sort of uh, Fighters are in each of these factions. Here, I should probably put the swarms in each in here. Yeah. Um, okay. So for each group, let me pull up the actual names here. So the the fun names, you've got the Cavalo Centauri, uh, the Aviar Carpies, the Mortec Cyclopean, Cy- Cyclopean, yeah, I know it's a hard one. The prowlers, <laughs> yeah, easy for me to pronounce. No, these are cool. Um, I mean, for and that would be your Ozark, uh, the Tetric Courts, uh, the Twist Welds. You've got the Twist Root Spite Revenant with Briar Lash, the Swarm Mage, uh, Twist Root Warden with Guardian with Hellbrid, uh, Harvester Blade, um, Revenants, and then you've got the Spite Steer, and then the Dryads. Um, I mean, I think as far as the rules go, you've got some, some really like interesting choices, I think for your fighters, if you want to branch out, um, and like double down on some, because like the abilities are all pretty solid. I'm, I'm hoping like some of them, like the artery severing strike, right? If you have more more of the um, the doggos and the harpies, right? You can you can probably pull that off a little bit more. Um, artery severing strike. A uh, fighter can use this ability only if a fighter has been allocated one or more damage points by a melee action made by them. This activation till the end of the battle round. Each time that enemy fighter makes a reaction or an action uh, other than wait, roll a number of dice equal to this ability for each roll two plus. So if you have that fighter that's going to punch your your dog back into oblivion or get your harpy back, um, you know they're going to have high dice. They're decent strength uh, for the the harpies. They're quick, um, and all of them are still pretty inexpensive. So getting them out there to do fun stuff and like slow down your opponent or tackle, uh, right? To use like a you know a, an older reference, if they're like your tackles, right? You throw that into a Neve Black Talon, and maybe you're not going to kill her but you're going to slow her down a little bit yeah. and having that trade always be in your favor, right? Or the 
230 point knee black talent is busy cutting her way through 80 point dogs versus her, you know, being able to jump into, you know, your uh, Centauri or one of your other guys. Right. Right. Is there any uh, unique lore that you guys appreciated from the Trisfeld or the Teretic cohorts in terms of the individual models and their stories? Uh, I like that the uh, the Cavalos Centauri uh, is like is like the one who's aware of his punishment, and so they like they left him with enough personality to to like let him know that he's like you uh, you are having a bad time, you know you got <laughs> right because like they used to be liege Cavalos, which were you know hero the generals riding skeletal steeds that led the um, that would lead the Osiric armies, and now they are. They got combined with their seeds to become a centaur, and so that's really embarrassing. So they should be—they they are embarrassed, and they can be embarrassed. Uh, unlike the other models, which are more like animalistic and can't really, don't really understand what's going on. Right. I, I thought that was even compounded by the fact that the that the Cyclocopians and the Cavalos both have these nadrite eyes that the Mortisons could watch. You know, they can mm -hmm. see what they're seeing. And uh, and it sounded like they might have some control, or it might be more influence in terms of, hey, we want you to do this. You go over there, look at that, or whatever. And so even even this Cavalos has got this in his eye and his head, and you know, he has to like do whatever they want. <laughs> it's kind of frustrating, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. I thought the uh, the Twistfeld was interesting too because they talk about the swarm sages used to be more of a they they have the spite swarms which are have jade magic, so they used to kind of clear corruption. And they would remain back and usually, uh, you know, taking care of the soul pods and other places, which cleaning corruption, especially in, in Gairan, where they're cleaning out all the Nurgle uh, infestations. And they talk about, well, now they realize that these uh, swarm sages, can, you know, the, the swarms will eat some of the corruption on the exterior of these twist weld and keep them alive longer. You know, they can't do anything about what's inside them. But so now they've gone out into the world, let themselves become infected to help keep these Sylvaneth alive longer and in the hopes that they can achieve something and beyond themselves to help the Sylvaneth. So I was like, wow, that's kind of a, an interesting idea where the this spite swarm controller is now the only thing that keeps them alive because they eat away these plants that are growing on the outside of these, these Sylvaneth. So it's definitely an interesting concept. Reminds me of our plague zombie, or our you know mushroom infested zombies we had for Adepticon too. So, <laughs> GW writing down our script, man. <laughs> Great minds think alike. That's all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, so, since we're kind of talking about those, I know that Paven, you mentioned that the Toratic Prowlers are your favorite. Well, what is it about uh, them that you like the most? Uh, I think they're cute uh they're yeah. they're uh they also have like a lot of cool different like animalistic head options yeah i saw that that's cool which i think are all like this kind of like boar bird with horns uh, -huh. uh kind of cat looking thing something that's kind of like a bull uh and i think those are all uh you know fun and i like that they're like i like that they're bone dogs <laughs> yep that's fair i mean yeah Lots That's of pumps it. there. It. <laughs> yeah, I like I like the centaur. He's pretty cool looking. I have to admit, uh, you know, it's like when we had the centaur for the Karnathi. I was like, oh right, nice. You know, just, you didn't really see him with the beast beastman anymore. So, but yeah, it's kind of nice, nice to see another centaur represented uh, in this particular faction. How about you, Vint? You have any favorites? Uh, I've always liked since they like launched the the Dreitus stuff. Anything spite has been really cool. Like the different spite options you've had with like tree revenants or the spite revenants. Um, so the revenant with the briar lash, I think, just looks really cool. Uh, I'm yeah. excited to see it, like the cool hobby that comes out of him. Um, right, because you, you have all the right parts to make him organic or make him, you know, very deciduous or tree like or whatever you want to do. You have infinite options, right? You have your spirit like aspect to him. You have your so if you want to make him green or blue or white with like a light gray, like you can do anything with that model. And he just looks super cool. Yeah. Yeah, I know. And like in, in here they do have that interesting where they have the more organic versus the 
tree kind of coloration, the different shape they do. Mm -hmm. It works pretty well, I think. And then you have a favorite uh, twist ball model too, Maven? Or yeah, I really like the tri twist root uh, wardens. I mean, I like the the tree revenant style. Yeah, uh, yeah. they like that half elf, half tree. And these guys look pretty cool versions of them. Like we got a bow, we got a big old axe, um, and a spear too. I think spear, spear and shield. I think they're all. I think yeah, I like those models a lot. I wish they weren't. Great. <laughs> right, <laughs> you're just regular. Oh, they were my favorite. Um, could do some modeling, I guess. <laughs> a little bit of work. Yeah, that's it later in the notes. But I'm like, oh, could you cleanse them? Like everybody's right. creating corrupted versions of stuff. Yeah, like a clean version. <laughs> right. I'm like, oh, there's so much work with the knife. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. Little bit, but... um, How about you, Josh? Uh, yeah, no, I think um, that my favorite was actually the one you picked out too, the the spite revenant with the lash whip. It, it, it looks like a really mean looking whip. <laughs> it's it's kind of cool and it's crossing his whole body and up, and you know, it's a, it's quite imposing. So. Yeah, no, All it's right. it's cool. Yeah, there's some really unique modeling opportunities with these guys. Um, so we talked already a little bit about what drives these two factions and their plans. Um, and so we can kind of jump into any other lore or stories in the book that piqued your interest or you want to share? Oh, Pavin? I feel like I have said all my lore facts that I that I picked out of the of the story. Um, I don't think I have any other ones. Sorry. Oh, well, that's all good. Vin, did you have anything? Not really off the top of my head. You guys did a great job covering it. All right. Sweet. Yeah, I think the only other thing that I kind of read about that I thought was interesting, uh, I mentioned about the spite swarm hives, but the, they talk about the parasitic growths in the Sylvaneth, and they, they say in terms of their initial fights with the Teratic cohorts that they were losing and just weren't strong enough, and so they ended up using the the, the spite swarm or sages' powers to make themselves more infected and infused with this plant substance. So you know they're losing their sanity and their their bodies, but now they're more able to fight against the Ossiarc Bone Reapers. I was like, dang, <laughs> that's a little rough. <laughs> But you know, but they're you know sacrificing themselves to prevent other Sylvaneth from getting infected. Um, with, with that, we can kind of jump in. As uh, Vint alluded to, there's some really interesting abilities uh, for both of these factions, and we won't cover them all because there are definitely other podcast groups that do deep dives into all the sort of mechanical sorts of ways to play these factions. But uh, we can certainly talk about a couple different favorites. Uh, you know, one of the things I thought was really interesting is this kind of wild dice mechanic that they're using with the Tyrannic cohort in terms of ways to earn more wild dice, but then sp spend them to do an additional faction ability. I'll, I'll give one example. There's, there's a triple called Unleash Rage, where you can, the crit from your next melee attack, um, get plus one. Uh, you know, get one additional crit hit when you successfully crit. So you end up getting two crit hits. But you can also spend two wild dice, and then you get two additional crit hits. So you got to have three crits off that one roll of potential. But you got a crit, or else nothing happens. But So I thought it was interesting in terms of ways to earn wild dice or spend wild dice. And they have, again, artifacts that they can earn in campaign where they can count as spending a wild dice. So you don't actually have to spend your wild dice. But Did you guys have any examples that you... I thought was thought were interesting for the Teratic cohort. Yeah, definitely. Like the thing that stands out is the wild spending wild dice mechanic. Mm -hmm. I'm curious if it's better just to like have the wild dice and use them as regular wild dice because you're gonna get like way more with this war band. Yeah. Um, well, what they do have the they have just like the God Speaker and the um, Dark mm -hmm. Oath. They have a double that allows them to earn wild dice on a five up. Yeah. So so I think that helps maybe generate this, you know, makes it work. But yeah, again, you know, is it using them as abilities better than spending them for the extra effect? Yeah, so I guess I'll have to wait. Yeah, I don't know. Or just like, right, just like gaining initiative and thing, other things you're right. talking for. Um, I like their their double for uh, Bestial Leaps uh, because it, well, it, you know, they, they kind of like, you know, go beast mode uh, for right. a second there. And you get a bonus move, which is always good. Three-inch bonus move. 
three inches is not that great the bonus move oh is very good so it's mm-hmm. like almost a strictly better um oh God, what's the fast one what's the rush move? rush yeah. it's strictly better rush yeah uh, and it gives you fly right uh, with that with that three inch move so it's like you can jump up and uh, over models yeah. yeah over models or yeah so it's really it's really great it really helps the map on some movement stuff mm-hmm. uh and you can spend the wild die and then get four inch move so when you really when you need just one more inch which <laughs> happens all the time it's war cry <laughs> uh you can use it use it then especially in the last turn you know if you get extra wild dice in your fourth round eh, you know why not right you can get spend that, that stuff get there <laughs> So it's kind of like a poor man's uh, rampage. Right, right. Uh, there's some interesting twist weld ones, too. Um, they, again, they have more of a, you know, the themes in terms of the, the names are really interesting. But yeah, I thought the triple devour infection. Uh, pick a friendly within 12 inches, roll the dice equal to the value of the ability. On a four up, you deal one damage to that model. But for each damage dealt, they get plus one to the next melee attack. So you kind of inspiring them hurting them but then they get more f- ferocious <laughs> interesting you know spend the triple i guess you need it somebody is really good position give them extra attacks it could be interesting yeah. yeah it's it's really well it's thematic because it's their like sacrificing their life essence to be right. more ferocious yeah um but it's like it's also like tricky to set up because you have to spend a triple you have to roll a lot of four ups you have to pick a fighter that hasn't activated yet but then you're damaging them, like you're kind of really telegraphing what you're about to do. Right. Um, but if it does work out, you know, you could be giving three, four, you know, more a bonus attacks to right. you know, a big old fighter. You want a big old fighter with a big old hammer. Um, yeah. like an annihilator, like allies really stick out to me. Croxagore, you know, all this stuff that's you know, really they, they can really benefit from plus one attack. Mm-hmm. Um, and you just take that fight, and then they can use an ability. And so, what do they use? They use like I don't know, true, there. yeah, um, yeah. It's definitely an interesting warband because the, the leader is not necessarily your big fighter. You know, like like yeah. Jade Obelisk, your leader is not really your big fighter; it's somebody else. So you're kind of <laughs> boosting those other models and supporting them. Not that it's not a good fighter; it's just not like you know the Cavalos Centauri is definitely a big hitter, but. Yeah, and they they don't really have any big big fighters in their war bands. So they're kind of it, it benefits an ally more than like the individual fighters in their war. Band. Yeah, yeah, they're all kind of like 110 to 120 points. Yeah, so, yeah. Did you have any abilities? I mean, you shared one ability earlier. Event was there anything else that you that was interesting? I mean, I like the vines ability. Your characters are in that weird spot where they have just enough health where they might not get aced by a smaller character, and this gives you kind of a way to fight back a little bit without having, you know, to finish off somebody, or if you're getting, like, surrounded by chaff or getting tackled, um, right? Like, when I look at the OV, the um, Ozark Bone Reapers group, I see a lot of, like, and we delayed them and we tackled them till our Centauri or somebody bigger can come get them mm-hmm. um, because they've got a bunch, of fast and a bunch of heavy and slow, which is a good mix. Um, yeah. But a way to get rid of that, right? If you can ability out of out of some, you know, lower wounds characters and get away or move a little faster and get out of it, it just gives you that that little extra push. And that eruption of vines works for all of them. Is just right. I think pretty nice. Um, yeah. Yeah. The other um, thing I thought was interesting is the the twist weld reaction is actually pretty good. I thought mm-hmm. where you can um, as a reaction um before the dice are rolled um every time the person that's attacking you rolls a five up they take two damage so especially if you know you've got a higher toughness model and they need five ups to hit you anyway all their hits are going to be two damage back at them you know so it's better than a you know a counter where it's you know ones or twos which is well i mean i guess it depends ones twos or threes you know yeah get some damage back but this is a two up you know for hits you know so it's kind of interesting but yeah, it's like what do you what do you want to hedge against? Do you like if yeah, low uh, rolls or high rolls? <laughs> yeah, if, you want, if they're missing, then you're probably alive anyway, which is good. All right, all right. But if they're hitting, it means they're rolling well, so at least you're doing damage back to them. I think it really is very situational, but you already have you do have counter anyway, right? right. Um, so you might do, so situationally, you can choose one or the other. Mm-hmm. Um, you can kind of guarantee like okay, you either 
you kill me and you kill yourself or I live uh, right. would be like a good, a, you know, a nice reaction to be able to have. Yeah, that's an interesting way to look at it. Yeah. yeah. But only if you have high toughness. <laughs> and you don't, they don't have a lot of high toughness. They have a, they have a tough yeah. five guy. Right, right. But yeah, a lot of them are, you know, not, not that high toughness. I didn't look at the wounds either, but I think most of them are kind of around 10 ish or something. Yeah, oh, they're bad. around. They're twelve. They have a couple. Twelve. Okay. Nice. They have the one tough five guy, right? The warden yeah. with spike yeah. spear, right? Um, but I mean, they have they have some yeah, decent 12. damage output for sure, especially yeah. at like their points values. Like, not to get yeah. And the wardens at least have four attacks, strength fours, which are pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah, like very, uh, right, right there in the middle. <laughs> like right, <somewhere>. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. One, this is the dryads moving five. Makes them not super slow, which is kind of how I felt they were in the past. So correct me if I'm wrong there, but slow, like fast dryads as opposed to slow dryads, I feel like we've got a, a twisting of the zombies, right? We've got that 28 <laughs> days later kind of screaming right. and running dryad as opposed to the low like slow lumbering dryad yeah i don't remember what the speed was on the previous dryads um what the dryads rather yep you have to look it up in war crier i guess let's see that yeah but, uh, i have to yeah. check it out okay um and then of course we have our terrain piece the ravening narlook uh open wide <laughs> And apparently, uh, again, the lore for the Ravening Narlok is that it's been captured and chained down and restrained, typically by the uh, Tyratic cohorts to, to feed things to. Or, but it also indicates other warbands do the same thing to, uh, you know, parade upon and, and sacrifice their enemies. But uh, the, in addition to the really cool-looking model, there is not not any abilities or anything associated with this, but there is a, a unique uh, thing you can do if if a model falls within two inches of it, of the mouth, you can choose to kick the fighter in. It's called kick him in. Uh, you have to, the fighter rolls three dice and you add the model's current damage. You know, so if they've got ten wounds, you add that to your die. If the total is greater than the fighter's total wounds characteristic, they're taken down. They're, they're gobbled up in the tree. Otherwise, they do a, a normal fall test as normal. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is great. It's kind of like kicking into lava, but now we got a big mouth. You can kick them in there and see if yeah. they get swallowed up by the tree. <laughs> I like it. Give me that instant death anywhere. <laughs> right, right, right. Wound them a little bit. Kick them in the tree. <laughs> and down you go. Right. But yeah, at first I thought the model was kind of goofy looking when we saw some previews, but you know, seeing some other pictures of it, it looks pretty. It looks pretty interesting. Definitely looks like a menacing, that's for sure. <laughs> the mouth counts as dangerous terrain, as you would expect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I think one of the really interesting additions to this uh, book that nobody expected is that they added battle traits for all factions. You know, individual. Um, uh, war cry specific war bands as well as general aos factions battle traits um so you can have you've got two options you can either if you stay if you have all the models within your faction only in your faction you can take the faction specific battle trait or the alliance specific battle trait but if you have any mixtures of allies or whatever else you can only take the alliance specific battle trait lots of really cool options in here um paven you got any favorites that you wanted to touch on Sure. Uh, I'll maybe go one at a time or however on yeah. it. But the, the Grand Alliance ones are not very good. So yeah. you're, taking, you're definitely taking a, a... And that should be how it is. Like, you know, if you're going to add a limitation, you should get an added benefit for that. Um, I'll start with... I think one of my favorite ones that surprised me is uh, in Death, the Flesh Eater Courts have a, their battle trait. is called Form a Lance, uh, which is literally... It's lance formation. Uh, they right. give it to the flesh eater courts of Warcraft. So there's an ongoing joke that the flesh eater courts are the Bretonians, and uh, it seems like they James Workshop has um, embraced that, uh, right. kind of, that the joke. Yeah, uh, so yeah. lance yeah. formation for those that don't know is the formation that Bretonians in the old world and fantasy battles could take, where you put three into a triangle, three or more, and now you they get uh, flesh eaters get bonus for 
having three guys together in a triangle and they get bonus attacks or bonus move. And so I thought that was when I saw that one, I was like, oh, that's cute and yeah, fun. Yeah. That is funny. <laughs> and it's also funny for people, like not on horses or anything, to be in a lance formation. Like, those right, make any sense. right. Part of the madness. <laughs> exactly. But they believe it works, so it works. Exactly. Okay. And then, you know, it works for them. That's good. How about you, Vent? Was there any, any particular battle traits you caught your eye? Uh, I really like the Jade Obelisk one. Um, the Blessings Speaker. It just feels like something they would have, right? With the, It removes all uh, damage allocated to uh, somebody with the sign rune mark. Um, or with the, the totem. So mm -hmm. your, your totem guy who's walking around with the, the literal Jade Obelisk on his back, who's one of your better fighters, suddenly is just at full health. Um, and it's only once per battle, but um or sorry the first time uh uses the bloody tribute ability but it's just i think it's i think it's good it feels right it's very like it lines up well and i think that yeah. that's pretty cool yeah they certainly have a mixture of like some are abilities some are once per battle some are like all the time some are once per round quite a, quite a range of different ways that these these kind of work and uh, the first ones I kind of looked at were, of course, the Vulcan Flame Seekers and uh, the Flames the Fire Slayers to see, you know, okay, what, what are the differences there? The Vulcan Flame Seeker one it has a friendly fighters with the Berserker rune mark, and there's only one, the Berserker, can essentially use a triple to bring back the uh, the Wormling, you know, which is okay. Well, that's kind of cool. It comes back full health um, next to the Berserker. But it was like one of the only ones with an ability. It's like you got to use an ability to do it. And I was like, well, that's that's kind of a bummer. When well, there's lots of other really cool things that don't require you to spend ability dice for. <laughs> like the Fire Slayer one, I thought was really good. Is that uh, is is essentially if you use an ability, you get to add one to your move characteristic for the next move action. I was like, okay, that's a simple generic. Help the slow guys get around a little faster. Nice and easy. Yeah. So I was a little disappointed in the Vulcan Flame Seeker one, but that's a bummer. Yeah, yeah, I think there's a, there's a big range on how useful these are. Like, yeah. I think uh, the up there, up there for like uh, biggest stinker <laughs> is the uh, you know I looked up my old my old favorite uh, signs of the flame. Yeah, and theirs is like if an enemy unit heals, reduce the healing by one. And you're like, oh, okay, <laughs> that's gonna come up a lot. Oh. Uh, yeah, so yeah, it's just uh, great. Mm -hmm. Um, so I didn't think that one was very good, but uh, yeah, the should we go, should we, how many more should we do? Should we each pick one or two more? Yeah, I've uh, got okay. I've got one for the most useless list. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, right. Right. entertain <laughs> me from the Spire Tyrants once per battle round, a friendly fighter with this battle trait within one inch of or more of your friendly enemy fighters. Uh, can pick one of those enemy fighters to duel. When they do so, each time that friendly fighter makes an attack action that targets that enemy fighter, you can change the strength characteristic of that attack action to equal the toughness toughness characteristic of that enemy fighter. It okay. feels like your whatever's big is going to stay big and scary, and whatever is like it, it it's not going to help you much just because there's not like this guy's got a wildly higher toughness than his strength. Or the other way around, it just feels mm -hmm. very blah. Yeah, and then like if situational. It makes it, yeah, yep. It doesn't feel like it's gonna. If you you're using it on somebody with a toughness three, the chances like it's maybe like a cipher lord. In which case, it doesn't matter because they're gonna swing with a ton of attacks, right? <laughs> Your strength three fighters aren't gonna be that scary for them. So yeah. Yeah, I think it's definitely more for those who are in high toughness. So you can hit on a four up instead of a five or six, I guess. You know? Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's like a the situational like plus one strength. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. plus two strength. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. So you can, so you can hit on fours. You can hit on fours yeah. instead of fives. Yeah. 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 Woo. yeah. 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 I thought the uh, the Quester Soul Sworn one was really cool. Uh, the oh, yeah. heroes without limits. That you can use more than one ability per activation without having to do the weight, you know. And I was like, "Wow, we could even use the same one." <laughs> so like, yeah, just use like onslaught three times, right? I know, yeah. I know, I know. It's crazy. I was like, "Wow, that's kind of like the no last man standing rule we used to have, where they could just use all the abilities they wanted." <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, that was like my favorite rule from Ages or not Ages of uh, War Cry One that they didn't uh, bring over, which is like yeah. the only one fighter left. They can use as many abilities as they want. Yeah, <laughs> your whole war band all the time. I know, I know. It's like wild. Yeah. There's like no restrictions. It's just <laughs> yeah. It's like ooh, that could be interesting. Yeah, that one, that one was definitely my list. But then I saw it in your list. Uh, I like. I like the Iron Jaws one. I don't know how good it is, but it feels like people wait. Okay, so the way the way it works is if the enemy, a fighter on the enemy in the enemy's warband uses a wait action, an Iron Jaws immediately gets to do a bonus move. <laughs> I think it was maybe a three inch move. What did I, I didn't write it down? Yeah, a move action up to three. And so it's like if they if they if they're messing around, it's called enough right. messing. Uh, you get to you get to get slowly move your guys up like. Um, <laughs> And I don't know. I feel like I'm in games a lot, especially in Battle Round One, where people are just like waiting out to do activation, uh, right, like chicken, right. and yeah. just to move all your iron just, just, just a little bit. Well, you can, like, you kind of fewer models. That was fun. Yeah, what? and it's, it's less punishing for you if you have fewer models than your opponent too. Then, because then you're like, oh, okay, I get a bonus move when you wait. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, you'll take it. Yeah. Yeah, some of the other ones give you wild dice by doing certain things. I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, it was a good mixture of stuff for sure. The, the Disciples of Zinch Arcanites one, I like the Warp Fate. It it just is very, again, it's kind of like and themey. And again, mm -hmm. it could really help you or it could just be a total mess. And that's kind of how they play. Um, after the initiative phase, starting with the attacker, each player of a warband with this battle trait can roll one dice for each double or triple or quad they have on a four up change the value of those dice to six. So that means you have two abilities that can change your doubles to sixes, which is really yeah. what you want anyway to like give your ranged attack a bunch of strength. Um, but it's just kind of funny to see like, okay, now I've got a bunch of sixes all the way across the board. Um, right. Right. So like, it's just, it's cool. kind of fun if you have like a lot of abilities, but if you have like all singles, Yep. You know, yep. right. Doesn't matter much, but yeah, let's get, it up. let's get sixes on everything. Let's go. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. So I thought it was a really interesting addition and it says it's of course optional, you know, both players have to agree and it could be narrative, you know, match play, whatever. So just something, uh, another layer to add to fun and interesting things for sure. All right. I guess with that, we can dive into you know what, what's in the rest of the book that kind of covers with the two war bands it comes with. It's got the, as, as you would expect, it has all the, the campaign quests, heroic traits, and other, um, you know, um, uh, unique, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Their site, <laughs> their, their, you know, their terrain, uh, encampment. encampment. Uh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> encampment. Their unique faction encampment. Um, so then again, they're all, I think, very thematic. Uh, there was one I thought was very flavorful. Uh, it was called Spiteful Charms. And it was for the, the Sylvaneth uh, heroic traits. But you essentially had to choose which one you wanted to do. And then it told you, based on which one it is, what you had to do to get it. You know, So I was like, oh, they tailored it depending on what uh, path, essentially, you were trying to take. So I thought that was kind of a unique uh, twist that we hadn't seen in terms of how those worked. Is there anything in terms of the quests or heroic traits, artifacts that you guys saw that you thought was interesting? Uh, the Bloodbriar Whip. Um, you add one strength to the, the characteristics of melee stuff. Uh, it, I mean, it buffs the whip. It gives us the the extra juice for the squeeze on that model that we're excited about. Um, right. But you can also allocate three damage points to each enemy fighter that was allocated one or more damage points by the bear's melee attack actions. So if you if you were able to like tap two and then burst lines into them, it's like six flat out of the gate. So right. you probably killed two small fighters. You probably half health two bigger fighters. You know you've done you've done good work with one fighter. It just feels feels cool. Yeah, especially the three Super inch range up. on that whip. Yeah. 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 So you can, you can get places. Right. <laughs> exactly. Reach around. <laughs> oh, <Yeah>. worse. <laughs> there's a there's a couple of the twist weld artifacts, uh, called the bark flesh artifacts. Uh that 
force additional injury rolls on enemies or your fighters. Mm -hmm. uh, so one is the needle bite hornet hive where you pick a point and then, you know, hornet swarm. And if it takes down a fighter, there's a 50-50 chance you make an additional injury roll for that fighter. The Jordi can make an injury roll for them being taken down. Right. Um, so, but it's like they're double, double dead. Uh, <laughs> get that one. Um, I don't like that. More. Yeah, and then there's one that if you don't um, if you don't take any damage during the battle, you have to roll a dice, and then on a one, you get you take an injury roll. Wow, um, <laughs> the the kind of the parasitic artifact is like needs to feed on your blood throughout the battle. Uh, and if not, That's it can funny. like eat you alive. That's interesting. Yeah, cool. that is cool. Yeah, and uh, and then the campaign arc is uh, as again uh, traditional for these these sets of books where it's got uh, three player or three games set up for the two factions to play uh, with branches that depends on which faction wins. And uh, for this particular lore, it's about both of them trying to you know of course the Triswell are trying to keep the OBR away from the Talaxis and the cohorts are trying to get close. And so, but it, none of them actually get there or succeed in their objective the it just talks about the twist while getting closer to the ritual to be able to pull down to Lexus and the cohorts getting close enough to maybe get in to Lexus so uh, it'll be interesting to see again where we go from here but, so lots of fun lore but yeah and, and, the, and the the battle plans and stuff look interesting but yeah, mm -hmm. it'll be fun to try out the two factions yeah um for the battle plan generators uh as tr typical they include a bunch of uh, new deployment maps, new victory conditions, and new twists. Did you guys see anything that you thought was particular fun or interesting? They all have very thematic names for sure. Uh, but... Oh yeah, I got one. It's called Desperate Times and Measures, and it's a twist. Uh, okay. In times of great adversity, heroes and villains alike rise to the fore. Okay, so when this it's a, it's a little bit of a lever run. So when this twist card is drawn, each player must pick to be a hero or a villain. So I already, I already love it. All right. Yeah. So you get to pick as soon as you choose, are you Hillary or the villain? And then at the start of each battle round, where half or more of their fighters warband are taken down, um, a hero can pick one of their fighters to be a heroic, can be heroic, or a villain can pick one of their fighters to be nefarious. So, okay. So you're like, as soon as your half your warband is taken down, now you have a chance for a great individual to rise up in your war band and uh then you get the you get the following superpower if for your heroic your hero or your villain heroic fighters can make reactions without forfeiting their actions in a battle round so that okay. as many reactions as you want that's pretty good and then nefarious fighters can make three actions per activation instead of two nice so three moves three attacks right you now if you uh get a rampage in there five actions um so yeah pretty pretty big buff you know and the buff hits the person that's behind so, mm -hmm. uh, supposedly if they've lost half their war band um and it's fun just to pick a pick a model and call that one the hero and pick that model and call that one the villain yeah no i agree uh, yeah that one definitely caught my interest it was fun how about you Vant? was there anything that you thought was funny I mean, I think a lot of the, the victory conditions are just cool because it's like uh, they add a lot of annihilation play, trying to kill the other team. Uh, mm -hmm. They kind of, you know, put a different spin on it, like historic aftermath. This ends after four. The annihilation tokens are um, you have to uh, kill a defender or an attack. Um, each time a defending fighter with this or two of two or more attacking fighters is taken down the attacker gets an annihilation point so you have to mob up to kill them um, i mean you've got hunt don't gather which is uh, each time an enemy fighter taken down you gain a carnage point if there are no enemy fighters within an inch of that fighter um, if a player has three or more carnage point the battle ends so it's just like i think in its own way it's kind of good for new hobbyists and new players mm -hmm. because you're going to be able to go punch each other as hard as you want as often as you want <laughs> and how you punch each other is going to teach you good habits. Like, oh, I need to pile onto this fighter with two two little guys, and then I'm going to get my point. Um, 
and then you'll find in bigger games that like being able to pile on to a, a bigger fighter to bring it down is a good idea or not a good idea. And you'll learn that through these victory conditions. So I think they're kind of cool in that respect. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, and again, some of the names are like Quarantine, Carnage is the Cure. You know, it's very thematic in terms of mm -hmm. the war bands you're playing with and others. So I thought they did a nice job. And some unique mechanics, I think, too, like the Carnage points and the hero, hero and villain. No, I thought that was hilarious. So it's definitely fun to try. And, um, and of course, they have a, a, a background tables with the fun names and everything. So they... One of the lore tidbits they mentioned there is that the the background um, names for the twist weld is they usually take a unique last name so that other Sylvaneth know they're infected. So it's like like a certain set the name tells people that you know stay away. <laughs> uh, and one of the other aspects in terms of the twist weld origins, they had twisted singers because they talk about the uh, the infected no longer being able to hear Lariel's song. So this particular origin says, though your warriors no longer hear the spirit song, a new discordant melody from the Naralokes fills their minds. I was like, I was like, oh, it's interesting and kind of a unique tree song for these particular infected in the Naral woods. It's like that's gonna add some interesting lore twists and things in the background tables. Okay. Josh, can I pick another twist I liked? Yeah, of course. Okay, so this is uh this is like a game connection kind of twist. So uh, back in when Underworlds was still in the Gnarlwood, yeah, because Warhammer Underworlds briefly went to the Gnarlhood, went underground, yep. I think Who went calls? to Galaxis and then left, uh, all in like you know six months. Um, they had a, a special deck called the Void Curse Thralls, which was a deck that introduced this Void Curse that would uh, take your fighters in that game and kind of turn them into these confusing uh kind of mindless star zombies hmm. uh that would have this void curse and then there would be rules around it and this twist is called void curse for a war cry and oh, in this twist you the void curse is spreading amongst the war band and one of the cool things is that if this is it says at the beginning of this twist card if this is a campaign battle draw another twist so if you're in narrative play this is too narrative like <laughs> Don't worry, your war brand isn't void curse. Pull again. <laughs> you don't have to work that in. That's Nobody interesting. Nobody comes back from the void curse. Um, and then you picking a friendly fighter, and then uh, and then it you know it, it spreads amongst and the, the void curse. One is it adds five to your wounds characteristics, but you can't use any abilities. Oh, um, so it's like kind of a it's a good is it bad? It's good on right. some fighters, but bad on other fighters. Uh, but I thought that was cool that the game that kind of deep lore that's off to the side is spreading amongst the, the, the second tier games. So. Right. Well, that it says not in campaign. No, I was gonna say. Yeah, that's not interesting campaign. too. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> the void curse. Or, yeah. I'm always hoping they do more with, I feel like, yeah, this is, well, I'm really a field here, but like, I want more spaces to be explored in age of sigmar i feel like we know too much of the cosmology like we know mm -hmm. all of the the big evil gods are so known to us they're not they've lost some of their their their, their kind of um, mystery and fear yeah i want something else in the deep dive. well they talk about the stuff that in the void so they definitely yeah but what's there the I can, it's just like we don't we need a miniature I know. right i know um, well it's like so. it's like on the map here you know we still haven't heard anything about what they call it the spire of the void and you know spire of stars and some other interesting landmarks that are on there i was like well what does that mean you know it's that black mountain that nobody can get to and it's shrouded and you know clouds the whole time you know yeah give me more of it give me more exactly. of it. yeah okay i get they want mystery but yeah peaking the interest there want some more okay all right now with uh with, of course these new interesting war bands it's always fun to talk about new narrative takes or modeling opportunities that we might have uh for these particular war bands we talked a little bit about it but vent did you have any ideas or thoughts you'd like to share uh i mean when i saw the like weird way that the twist weld is is like modeled um you know the bumps and parasites and stuff uh, they kind of look like I thought was to make them like an Ulgu theme and do like, you know, almost like a, 
like really dark or dark blue and black on the spirit and then do like bright poppy colors like a neon almost like neons for the you know the bumps and the brambles um and i think that'd be kind of fun to do because it'd be right like you've got the weird stuff that is happening in ulgu um with uh the end of aos3 and i just think it would be kind of fun to to be like oh look like this isn't the only thing right that right. where places are and things are being tainted and destroyed so oh yeah that's interesting how about you paven uh well one idea was just to cleanse the tw twist weld and just right, like, right. like make them beautiful again uh and like <laughs> you know give them like kind of ornamental weapons instead of like the vines or use like swap out um like i know a lot of the um the really old underworld's war band um lothari's guardians was is like good representative models for a lot of these folks uh just without the corruption uh, I think that'd be quite a challenge, but that'd be, that'd be one idea. Um, another idea would be to take them and um, have the corruption be more uh, zombifying, um, and have them go like it's a it's an undead curse that's taking them over. And then you use more skulls and more zombie bits, and have it be um, kind of moving them that way. Maybe they're from the realm of death. And they're, yeah, they're cursed more than infected. Right, I like it. Yeah, and I think uh, yeah, my ideas is also twist weld related. Where obviously, uh, and I think I saw somebody else mention this too, is that the they, they certainly fit in the Nurgle theme. It'd be easy to kind of change it into more of a Nurgle infestation, pustules and things like that, instead of just a you know a spore or plant faced infection. So lots of opportunity there. I think it's harder to think of conversion ideas for the 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 cohorts, the Tyrannic cohorts in this particular one, at least. None of them jumped right at me. There's the twist out first inspired some thoughts and stuff like that. I think you can certainly I mean, I think a bestial theme. Putting putting the harpies with like your zombie dragon or with your terror geist would be kind of fun to just have them on the base or running around with it. Um, mm -hmm. Like they remind me of baby zombie dragons, right? Like they're like, I want to see one. I know they're not the right, they're not the same faction and they're not the right stuff, but aesthetically, I think they look similar. Um, yeah, and then we like got human skulls too, which is interesting. Yeah, I think it'd also be interesting to have one of those as like a, as like a pet on like a pirate version of the Ozark. Like you, <laughs> I like it. Would be kind of neat. That would be fun. Yeah, you could even like mess with trying to put fur or something on some of them. You know, like patchiness, make it look a little bit more, less constructed. You know, more decaying or something. Yeah. yeah 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 my only idea was to like make them something else uh so uh like make them like a soul bite version of that war band that is like mm -hmm. all vampires and beasts so like you know giant bats and uh you know uh, uh zombie zombie wolves uh, right yeah, yeah the, the dread wolves and you know have it uh have like a blood knight on steed to be the leader with mm -hmm. a big whip um yeah, you could do something like that. We're getting pretty far away from their from their design and aesthetic. Uh, but yeah, with these more specific war bands, they, they are in such a niche. It's a little harder to see like where to where to take them somewhere else. Yeah, they're more generic. Mm -hmm. or, um, yeah, but they're cool. Yeah, any um, interesting allies or monsters you guys think would go well with these particular war bands? Well, we don't do allies and monsters anymore because we're all trying to get our battle traits. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Well, you can. You get the faction battle, you know, the Grand Alliance battle trait. <laughs> I think the death one is like for a minion, yeah. you can uh, reduce the damage when you take the take cover ability like once per turn. It's like so. Oh, no, that's the, that's the order cool. one. That's the order. You can, on the take cover, it's on a three up instead of a four up or something. Yeah. Oh, like yeah, yeah. Great. That oh. one. Yeah. <laughs> the death one wasn't that's too weird. bad, actually. Yeah. Okay, fine. Well, <laughs> I mean, right, well, it, I would take you know. the zombie dragon as part of uh, uh, like, which is Vince's idea. I would take Vince's idea to take the zombie dragon with the. Um, I wish I wish you could take Drake. You know, she's a named character. You can't, but her theme fits the Twestweld so well. I mean, it does. Mm -hmm. you know, she's got the spite swarms and everything. 
she would be kind of cool. And maybe you could, well, order just doesn't have really, you can't. Doesn't you have get one that would be the you use tiger <laughs> rules and put her on right. a big oval base. I uh, know. Yeah. Yeah. That's a little tough. I guess she's on an oval base. Maybe she it's is. the same one. It could be. It could be. Actually. I don't think so. I think they're on a big base. I don't, I don't know. Mine isn't right here, but mm -hmm. I think they're on a bigger base than gotcha. Draca. Than Draca. Gotcha. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to look it up. You should. We'll see we'll see if it, the if this episode lasts long, long enough. <laughs> well now we can, right. covered most of the content. It is now time for free form discussion. And okay, so where are we going from here, guys? You know, we've gotten close. We can we can see it. We can't touch it yet. <laughs> and uh, you know, all we know we haven't really seen any previews for anything else yet for this season. So we kicking off a new season. Usually, we kick off a new season in August, September. We're, this is kind of that release, but it's not a starter set. And we know that, of course, they're revamping the the, the miniature line, summer two thousand twenty five. So, what do we think is going to happen between now and then? Thoughts? I don't know. Right. Addition change in over the winter? No, they'll probably save the addition to change till next summer. That tends like, to be the pattern. Phase out the models, yeah. Yeah, three years. Three years for it's the goes like uh, 40k, Age of Sigmar, then other games, miscellaneous games. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think Warcry's due for one next summer. I think we're going to be, I don't know what we're going to see. Hopefully we get more Age of Sigmar time. I want, like, I don't know, like take us to Talaxis this year. I think we're going to leave. <laughs> The Gnarlwood next summer. God, I, I, I have that they feeling. The Gnarlwood I, next summer. And if they don't do Age of Sigmar's version of Mordheim with this next season of Warcry, they're never going to do it. But like now, like we're just put it in the gnaw. It's all Skaven. It's all ruined cities. Like that seems like a slam dunk to me. Um, Except for all the warp stone. <laughs> yeah, there's already a ton of warp stone there. The weird stone. Uh, <laughs> And uh, yeah, I hope I hope that's what we do next. I think this I think this year's got we gotta go to Flaxus. Give us something, get us there. All right, Vent, for your thoughts. Catacombs 2.0 and Flaxus. Let's go. I know, I know. <laughs> that's my hope. My hope is that we get there and it's Catacombs 2.0. But yeah, but you know it'd be a bummer. To but do only that. on gnarled oak <laughs> trees. The whole board is gnarled oak trees and. <laughs> They spell out oh, Fort top. Haven oh. with their leaves. <laughs> oh, oh, it's got to be in the ruins. In the ruins. But yeah. That's, yeah. That's, I that's what I, I want. I do want to get all of our, our, our communities like painted uh, gnarl, gnarl wood terrain all together on one huge board. Yeah. yeah. Connect yeah. it all together. You know, yeah. 30 yeah. rope bridges, you know, two dozen trees. Oh, we got all those bamboo fortifications, you bamboo know. Fortifications. We got a bunch of Seraphon rune temples. Like, I think we have a lot of cool stuff. It's it's it is yeah. cool that it's all together. Yeah. I do. You know, I said before, I like kind of like to be in different environments too. Yeah. Uh, which we've we, been we here a while. All of our other terrain and stuff. But, yeah. Uh, it is, yeah. It is cool. and I, I've got kind of the same feeling. I think with with them phasing out models in summer of 2025, I think that's when we would see a new edition, probably that fall, you know, the August. Yeah. And yeah, uh, so I think you know, and I, I also have the feeling that they'll probably move out of the neural wood now since we're getting the Telaxis and whatever happens happens to Telaxis. And then yeah, where do we go from there? Do we go to actually where Age of Sigmar is kind of focused mm -hmm. in, in the new edition? Or do we jump to Ugu, you know, or whatever, you know? It'd be mm -hmm. really interesting to see where they go with that approach. Yeah. Or just something I, completely off the wall. Yeah, I really liked when like Warcry was doing something different than main Age of Sigmar because main Age of Sigmar was like all about fighting the Gash and ghosts, right? Um, in right. Shaiish and in other places, and then Warcry was just in the eight points, like doing pointless battles for uh, 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 uncaring gods. And I was like, yeah, that's where I'm at. And then, uh, <laughs> and then, oh, well, Age of Sigmar caught up to Warcry, and then we've been following Age of Sigmar ever since with the Norwood. But uh, I'll be happy with. Oh, man, if they make like a like Mordheim war cry, I yeah, I mean, that's, fly uh, off the shelves. It fly off the shelves. I think. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, I think the Gnarlwood has been kind of like that. It's like this destination where people are treasure hunting, and it keeps. You know, I like that we kind of keep 
moving inward and focusing closer and closer, which is oh, it's, like, it's kind of an, it feels like we're going nowhere, Josh. It feels, it feels like it's taking long to get over there. And over again. You know, <laughs> I know I've said in the last several book releases, we're getting close. I think we're almost. Nope, no, nope, there's still another. <laughs> I think I think we're actually getting closer. You know, I, you know so I, I don't know. I'm guessing between now and, and the summer, it may be two or three more boxes with some factions. But we have we've really gotten no hints. Maybe you know, maybe this week. Actually, we'll, we'll what if what if we never go to Talaxis? They just like or like oh, we couldn't <laughs> find it. You know, the Snowmaneth buried it. <laughs> Well, then they got to do like just a, an epilogue. They just got to give us an epilogue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you guys, you guys found it. Good job. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, awesome. Wow, well, that's pretty fun, guys. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely curious to see what kind of hints and things we'll get in the future, and uh, see what we got next. But it's definitely been an interesting lore read for sure. Some interesting factions. All right. You want to? kick us off their event and then we'll do the wrap up yeah absolutely um so thanks for stopping and watching us here at the dogs of war cry uh you can find us uh at the discord the mortal realms.com slash discord uh i'm at d-o-w underscore vint i believe or vint at d-w uh, i'm on discord uh, there's not a lot of vints out there just search me i'll be there uh paven where can they find uh, they can't find me. I'm hiding. <laughs> and you can find me on the Discord, Josh D O W. <laughs> That's the best way to do it. <laughs> but you can also email us at docsworkry at gmail dot com. All right. All right. Welcome to the Dogs of Warcry.